When Extreme Rules rolls around every year, you pretty much know what to expect. There's going to be an Extreme Rules match, which is somehow different than a street fight, a hardcore match, and a no-holds-barred match, but nobody can really explain why. One of the slightly more established feuds will probably wind up inside a steel cage, and there'll most likely be a last man standing match and or a submission match. And let's not forget the other speciality events throughout the year, where TLC and Hell in a Cell matches are scheduled via appointment, like an annual colonoscopy. Point being, some gimmick matches are just plain played out and overdone. That's why it's a breath of fresh air to see AEW dust off the old dog collar and chain for the heated Brody Lee versus Cody Rhodes rivalry, something we haven't really seen in a while. To WWE's credit, they did bring war games back, albeit with their own twist, and AEW has designs on a similar deal under the Blood and Guts banner. In a business that revels in nostalgia, it's great to see old concepts get to shine under modern light, especially when there are perfect good match types that have gone unused for far too long. But what other forgotten gimmick matches deserve to see the light of day in 2020 and beyond? Here are a few suggestions. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com and these are 10 wrestling gimmick matches that should be brought back. Join us! Number 10. The Boiler Room Brawl As far as environmental matches go, Boiler Room Brawls can make for unique viewing experiences. The original bout in which noted Boiler Room denizen Mankind fought The Undertaker at the 19th 1996 SummerSlam had a somewhat disquieting feel as a single camera shot lent a found footage flair to the hard-hitting brawl taking place among the shadows and dinge. The only thing that seems to be preventing WWE or anyone else from going back to this well is the fact that perhaps the match doesn't feel suited for anyone other than Mick Foley. But if we've learned nothing else in 2020, it's that when you're running wrestling with little to no live audience, you need to throw in visual spectacles abruptly different from the current norm. That first boiler room brawl was an exactly perfect, but the stark unpredictability of the unfamiliar environment, along with the willingness of both wrestlers to mercilessly attack each other with plunder, was a nice reprieve from the new generation as usual going on at the time. If ever there were a gimmick match custom made for today's cinematic presentations, it's a potentially imaginative one like the Boiler Room Brawl. Number 9. The Blindfold Match Blindfold matches, or for older fans, Prince of Darkness matches, have their share of detractors, and it's understandable why. There's a critical lack of action thanks to both wrestlers wearing restrictive hoods that we, the audience, are supposed to pretend they can't actually see through. The idea behind the match, usually, is that the babyface participant has suffered some sort of kayfabe blindness at the hands of the heel, and to get his revenge in fair fashion, each man has to be deprived of their sight. While there's a dearth of physical contact in blindfold matches, there can be a sense of fun to them, as long as there's a good-sized crowd willing to play along. As Jake Roberts demonstrated in such a match at WrestleMania 7, with Rick Martel, he can locate that dastardly model by pointing his finger and moving his arm horizontally, while the crowd essentially plays hot-cold, cheering as he gets closer to Martel. And of course, the fans won't help Martel because he's the asshole that blinded Jake! And you know what? It would have been really great to see a blindfold match featuring Roman Reigns during the peak of his babyface run just to see what the crowd would do. Eventually, he would just have to ignore their lies and peek through the eye holes, right? Number 8. The Singapore Caning Match Singapore canes, or kendo sticks, have been commonplace weapons in wrestling going back decades, though it's the signature weapon of a true ECW icon, the Sandman. In 1994, following a high-profile case in Singapore that resulted in corporal punishment for an American teenager, a then-heel Sandman began using the topical Singapore cane as his trademark prop, sadistically beating his enemies senseless with it. Shortly after, the concept of the Singapore caning match came to be. But it's not a match where each man gets their own stick to use as a weapon, the brutality is saved for the aftermath. See, the loser of the match has to submit themselves to 10 whacks across the bare back with the cane. Much as Cody demonstrated when he took 10 lashes with a leather belt at MJF's hands, a caning match can be a great sympathy device. In 1994, a young Tommy Dreamer, who ECW fans dismissed then as a pretty boy, lost to Sandman in such a match, then subjected himself to all 10 strikes. This despite offers from Sandman's valet woman to have the beating stopped if he submissively kissed her feet. A pained Dreamer insisted on taking 
taking the skin ripping beating to its end, then defiantly climbed to his feet, winning the respect of the crowd. Yes, it's an ugly spectacle, but it's also great drama if done right. Number seven, Stairway to Hell. Continuing with the theme of solid ECW inventions, the Stairway to Hell match is a very simple concept that might seem pretty basic by changing times and standards, but definitely left a mark in its heyday. The rules are very simple. A dangerous weapon hangs from the ceiling and you can only retrieve it with the aid of a ladder. So it's a ladder match, but you don't win when you procure the item. However, winning is made easier when you inflict said item onto your opponent. The Sandman wrestled Sabu in the first ever Stairway to Hell match in 1998, and the weapon of choice was a sizable roll of barbed wire, just waiting for somebody to free it from the hook. Ensuing matches have used a kendo stick as the suspended weapon, but no matter, just about anything can hang there for eventual use, though it's best when it's a weapon befitting the grudge. Perhaps years of Vince Russo's any noun on a pole matches have turned this sort of concept into a dismissible meme, but Stairway to Hell matches could probably be taken a little more seriously, especially given ECW's execution of them. Number six, Ultimate Jeopardy. We complete the ECW trifecta with a high stakes encounter that might seem a little confusing, but has the potential for a worthwhile payoff. Ultimate Jeopardy matches have traditionally featured teams of multiple wrestlers and have sometimes taken place in steel cages, but one unique stipulation is always in place. Whoever takes the fall in the match has something bad happen to them based on pre-match arrangements. Every participant has a specific wager and when they're pinned or submitted, well, they face ultimate jeopardy. Some potential stipulations over the years have included getting your head shaved, having to leave the company, steady tag teams having to split up if one member gets pinned, a cowardly heel having to spend five minutes in the cage alone with the entire babyface team, as well as title holders losing their belt to whoever defeats them. You could even see scenarios where one heel refuses to break up a potential pinfall of their partner, figuring better him than me when it comes to the tailor-made post-match punishment. There are tons of directions you could take an Ultimate Jeopardy match, and it deserves to be exhumed from the ECW gravesite. Number five, the towel match. At one time, there was more shame attached to submitting to a wrestling hold, though the increasingly popular world of MMA came to change that. Once the baddest and toughest fighters in the world were getting felled by rear naked chokes and arm bars, tapping out inside a wrestling ring was a bit less of an indignity than it used to be, and these days it's a common ending. At the 1994 Survivor Series, Bret Hart defended the WWE Championship against Bob Backlund in a unique type of submission match, one that played on the older idea that submitting to a hold greatly diminished one's badass quotient. Enter the towel match, a contest that can only end when your designated corner man throws in a towel of surrender on your behalf. For a heel, this means you can save face if your second tosses the laundry in before you tap out, so you can claim, in fact, that you never actually gave up. But when the corner men have personal stakes in the match, say the heel corner man loathes the babyface wrestler, the drama increases because it requires more than just caring about your wrestler's well-being to want to give up on their behalf. In other words, it's a submission match with added tension, as well as the chance for major story advancements and twists. Number four, the bunkhouse match. Not to be confused with the bunkhouse stampede, which was a combination cage match battle royal that wasn't one of Dusty Rhodes' better inventions, to be honest. And as far as standard bunkhouse matches go, it's really not that much different to a hardcore match, albeit with a fancy name, and a name that has mostly collected dust since the territories drew to a close at that. But saying that a bunkhouse match from 1986 is just like a WWE-sanctioned Extreme Rules match from 2020 is patently absurd and couldn't be more wrong. Bunkhouse matches usually involve the come-as-you-are principle pertaining to attire, meaning participants tend to show up in rustic-style street clothes to match the theme. This tends to include heavy-heeled cowboy boots, so you just know somebody's going to remove their own boot and beat the other guy's face with it. Remember when CM Punk and Chris Jericho battled in that street fight, and each man actually wore street clothes? It's the same idea here, where you're actually adhering to a theme instead of just going, okay, it's a freaking hardcore match. We'll stash the usual tables and kendo sticks under the ring. Bringing this match back could be Adam Page's lot in life, besides getting plastered and making his entrances to snarky lower thirds, of course. Number three, the first blood match. It's not hard to figure out why WWE's removed first blood matches from the menu. Although we see WWE superstars bleeding a lot more these days than we did throughout the majority of the 2010s, hardway blood or a sneaky blade job that WWE could pass off as hardway blood is one thing, but advertising that 
somebody is guaranteed to bleed is another and comes off as a bit barbaric. As such, this perfectly useful and exceedingly simple gimmick match has mostly lied dormant in the mainstream, but it doesn't have to lie dormant forever. First Blood matches do more than just promise the spilling of crimson for an audience that feasts on such mayhem, they're also useful in protecting wrestlers from taking pinfall losses. Theoretically, you could have Brock Lesnar, for instance, lose a First Blood match to any vanquished undercarder just because they were lucky enough to scrape his flesh with a solitary shot, whereas pinning the beast to the canvas is far more daunting. But of course, first blood matches are genuinely only brought into use when a feud gets heated enough, so you probably wouldn't see it for Lesnar versus tackling Dummy X. The match, however, has been buried for far too long, and as long as you don't overuse it, it can easily have a place again. Number 2. The Scaffold Match there's an inherent risk to scaffold matches, of course. Somebody has to fall from a great height, most likely with nothing to break their fall except the canvas below. Jim Cornette has regaled us plenty with the tale of his nasty fall from a scaffold at the 1986 Starcade, one in which his knees paid a steep price. But in a business where wrestlers take leaps off steel cages, tall ladders, and parts of the entrance set, is a scaffold match really all that dangerous? Technically, yes, because in those instances, the wrestlers have crash pads or other performers to help break their fall. But in an era where cinematic matches have received some acclaim, why not film a scaffold match with camera tricks? You can do everything with multiple takes up until that deadly drop, and then edit it however needed. You could even rip off the Mortal Kombat Pit Death, where you send your opponent off the ledge and down onto a bed of spikes, which is an effective way to write somebody out for a wellness violation. I mean, if Akira Tozawa can get eaten by a shark, who's to say what can't be done? Number 1. The Inferno Match You'd be hard-pressed to think of an Inferno match that would objectively rate higher than, say, three stars, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that the Inferno match is a spectacle unlike any other in wrestling, even if the very idea of it existing is pretty much insane. After all, what athletic commission is going to say, sure, two men enter, can't end until one is running around screaming while engulfed in flames. Sounds good, have fun! Of course, most of wrestling is a middle finger to the face of normality anyway, so semantics be damned. The signature gimmick match of Kane could easily be be passed down to somebody, perhaps Bray Wyatt, as long as it's not the infinitely lamer Ring of Fire variation that doesn't end in sports entertainer flambe. Wrestling has long been about visual thrills, and the sight of the fire raising higher after each mammoth bump never fails to produce oohs and ahs. It's not a match you would do often, but when it's introduced into the story, it would generate excitement from fans wanting to see the bad guy literally go up in flames. There's just something so satisfying about that, isn't there?